Hi. Um, continuing our look at uh, Arcadia, continuing the conversation that was started on Monday. Um, this is week eight of the Euro 2200 class, <coughs> Gender and Modernism in uh, Europe 1848 to 1920. Um, we spent Monday kind of touching upon a couple of um, works. Um, I think we had some presentations about, we had one presentation about Paul Gauguin, who um, I've uploaded some images um, of his work onto the course link, um, along with photographs by Félix Bonfils, another Frenchman, also working, almost all of the works we're looking at today are from the 1890s, and then a few more photographs by uh, Wilhelm von Gluden. And um, so I'll talk about all three briefly. I think it's going to be a brief talk. Um, and um, we'll consider this idea of Arcadia. Um, Arcadia, as I mentioned, it's sort of a, you could consider it as a counterpoint um, to the kind of uh, colonialism that was being um, undertaken by the by various churches. We hear a lot about, we hear a lot of those stories in Canada, um, in other places throughout the world where, uh, you know, there were vigorous missionary programs that perpetuated this thing called the Doctrine of Discovery, which if you haven't heard about that, I encourage you to read up on. It was really quite um, influential and, you know, had a lot of caused a lot of uh, destruction. Um, the concept of Arcadia was quite different. It also motivated, um, now not religious people, but uh, artists to flock to the furthest corners of the world, but um, in search of something slightly different um, than converting the locals. Or, or slightly different than a religious mission. Um, Arcadia is something that had been written about. I think I mentioned already it's a play. It is a physical place in Greece, in the Peloponnese. Um, but it was more of, um, became more of an ideal rather than a physical place um, that kind of embodied this uh, notion of being of having complete harmony in nature. Um, there are, it was an idea that was written about back in antiquity by authors like um, Virgil, Ovid, Tibullius, a couple other people. Um, and painters had also visited this question of Arcadia frequently um, you know, the, the sort of standard approach was to depict shepherds in a landscape um, frequently naked um, and to kind of identify them as Greeks, Greek shepherds. Um, they had sort of floral laurels on. Um, sometimes they had togas. Um, and more often than not, they were naked. Um, I think I talked a little bit about nudity on Monday, showed you a statue of uh, David by Donatello. Different story, different uh, tradition, you know, that's like a biblical story from the Hebrew Bible rather than a from Greek antiquity, but um, the nudity, I, I was explaining that the nudity there served a purpose. It wasn't um, there to, you know, turn anybody on. It wasn't pornographic. Uh, the, the artist was Donatello was not um, a pedophile. The purpose of the nudity is to communicate the innocence and the youth of um, of David. There's no other way for us to know that than by seeing his uh, young prepubescent body. Nothing um, 
what's the word? Uh, not ma malevolent. Nothing malevolent about it back in the day. Of course, nowadays, lots of people, I don't know if David's been canceled yet, but I'm sure there are voices that uh, want to cancel it. Um, in any case, we have three artists today that are, like I said, going into foreign places and um, in search of this, or, or under the auspices of Arcadia. And um, some are more successful than others. Definitely all of them, all three of them are wanting to escape industrialization. I think in the case of Gauguin, he wanted to um, escape a bad marriage. <laughs> um, and the five children, was it, that he had? Um, but uh, he, um, after, well, maybe I'll start with um, Félix Bonfils, um, who was a Frenchman, a photographer who went to Beirut, set up a studio called Studio Bonfils, um, in 1867. I think he had a wife and a son with him there. And from Beirut, he traveled around North Africa. He went to Egypt. He went to Lebanon. He did go to Greece, Syria, um, what was then Constantinople, what is now Istanbul. Anyway, all over. Um, and of course, Palestine, um, which parts of which today are Israel. Didn't, Israel didn't exist in the 1890s. Um, and he took a lot of beautiful photographs. Um, his his um, search for Arcadia was um, tempered by what scholars today would call Orientalism. He was really um, kind of fascinated with Arabs um, and local people wearing their uh, their local um, clothes. Um, so a lot of the photographs um, that we see by him, you know, are uh, men, men mostly in, um, you know, with uh, turbans and, um, oh, I don't even, I can't think of the name of that elongated shirt. It'll come to me in a second. Um, anyways, uh, there are beautiful um, images from around Giza of the pyramids um, all over, uh, just, just simple landscapes. Almost all of them are unpopulated, which I think is what makes them magical today. If you go to those places today, they are packed with buses of double-decker buses uh, full of tourists from all over the world wanting to um, see and experience what we call now the Holy Land. Um, so he was able to capture um, that. <laughs> he was able to capture that uh, and capture the sense of solitude and serenity that is really associated with, uh, with Arcadia. Um, so those are the first four photos in um, uh, on the course link page. Um, the second set of photos or images, sorry, are paintings that are by Paul Gauguin, who um, was a Frenchman. We had a presentation about him on Monday, and. Um, he was a Frenchman that uh, I think he had a couple of careers before um, before he decided to travel. I think he was the person I was referring to that uh, was fleeing a bad marriage or um, and, and in the process of a number of um, career changes. Um, I think he had been a stockbroker. Um, and suddenly sort of in midlife decided that he wanted to be a painter and made a really good go of it. Um, among other things, he, um, well, he spent a lot of time uh, consulting Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh, 
Um, so he he did travel quite a bit first to Copenhagen. Um, he went to Panama to oh you know what let's let's this is not appropriate. Um, Panama the Caribbean, and he developed this style of um, this kind of very saturated color. Um, you know, very kind of symbolic use of color. It wasn't a realistic use of color, but a symbolic use of color. Um, I think one of the words that uh, people used to describe his work was fauve, which means wild. You know, he was considered a kind of wild painter because of these crazy, uh, crazy colors, crazy palettes. Um, but uh, he, at some point, spent um, quite a bit of time visiting and um, communing with Van Gogh and having some pretty serious discussions about art and what, what, made, it, um, what made it successful. And unfortunately, the, one of the nights, um, it, uh, the, these discussions culminated in a kind of a altercation where... Um, um, Van Gogh tried to attack him with a knife and instead of attacking I think that having failed that was the night that Van Gogh turned and cut off his ear um, and I think that proved to be a little bit too much for Gauguin that's when he said sorry I'm out of here um, and he headed down to Tahiti so luckily they carried on a written correspondence and those publish those uh, letters are published and have um, survived so you can that's another um, book that you can get out of the McLaughlin Library I'm sure is uh, uh, the, the letter exchanges between Paul Gauguin and Vincent van Gogh um, in any case, Gauguin landed in Tahiti and spent really quite a bit of time there. I think a few few times he um, went back to France, but spent a great deal of time in Tahiti. And um, it's there that he produced his uh, kind of mature work. Um, I think I put three or four uh, paintings by him from that time, and you can see um, the... Well, his interest in the local people and in staging the local people in a kind of a um, jungle paradise. There's this incredible richness of, um, of uh, greenery. You know, they're surrounded just by um, vegetable plant growth. Um, and there's this incredible richness um, you know, which is, is really quite spectacular and, and made a huge uh, impact on uh, French audiences. I think he would send his canvases back once they dried. Um, and, uh, you know, he produced quite a substantial body of work. I mentioned that, uh, you know, there's not a museum in the world that doesn't have a painting by him, probably. Um, I think I also touched upon the fact that um, on Monday that uh, he briefly married a very young girl, age 13, um, fathered a child with her. Um, this was a, I'm going to say a local tradition. It was facilitated by her father. Um, I think I also said probably if this girl hadn't have married Paul Gauguin, she would have there would have been some other arranged marriage for her. Um, but it was something that did not make her happy, and she was the one that uh, stepped out of it or, you know, uh, no longer didn't want to continue it. So somehow that, that was dissolved. Um, but he continued to come back and to, um, oh, and her name is uh, Taha Amana, which um, we might, depending on student participation. We might have a presentation about her. She does have a Wikipedia page, um, which you can look up. Um, so 
yeah, that's the Paul Gauguin is the second um, artist on that, uh, you know, who's kind of uh, in search of or, or envisioning this kind of, like I said, an Arcadia, a, um, a kind of paradise on earth where humans are completely at ease, they're living harmoniously with nature. Uh, harmoniously with various animals, no bad weather, just re a lot of reclining. You know, there's no, all the figures are kind of like laying back and taking it easy. Um, nobody's, there's no warfare in, a, in these kinds of um, pastorals. Um, everything is idyllic and very, I think what you would say today is chill. Very, very chill. Nothing, nobody's got anything to worry about. Now, <coughs> a slightly... <coughs> Hang on a minute. Um, different variation that I touched upon on Monday were the photographs, black and white photographs of a German um, artist called Wilhelm von Gluden who um, had a predominantly a lot of nudes. He was active, he was from Germany, um, but I originally thought he was Dutch, but he's actually German. Um, and he moved to a city in Sicily to have his um, photographic practice. The city was called Taormina, it's still there. It's a, one of those cities with a big, um, volcano on the edge um, and he lived there his entire life from something like 1877 to 1931 that's about 50 years 31 and over 50 years almost 60 years that's quite considerable um, I think he spent some time away um, he spent some time away uh, during the war but then returned and while he was there throughout that um, almost 60 year period, he produced something like 3,000 photographs. These were predominantly of, th these sort of also were in search of this um, Greek ideal, um, in search of Arcadia. And um, his main, he occasionally photographed women, but his main subject was uh, young men boys even um, and they were staged among Greek ruins again with floral laurels um, with togas semi-naked or completely naked just full nudes um, and the focus of um, those images was uh, once again an effort to convey harmony with nature and this kind of um, Greek Arcadia. Um, these, you know, 3,000 photographs is, is quite a lot of, um, is, is a considerable number. And as I mentioned before, you know, a lot of them were, um, not all of them, but some of them were, um, homoerotic. In fact, he's considered to be the founder of modern of modern homosexual iconography. Um, so he's the subject of a lot of uh, scholarly attention. Um, he is also, you know, because of his practice in that city and the longevity of his stay there, um, you know, he's sort of... Um, uh, attributed with really the establishment of that city as a kind of gay hub for homosexual men um, in Sicily. You know, throughout Europe, I think, if, if uh, gay men were experiencing difficulty, particularly in Northern Europe, um, they would vacation or move to Taormina in Sicily. Uh, because of because of the association with von Gluden. Um, 
they, you know, and they, it was obviously safe. It was a safe place for them. That's that's how I would uh, phrase that. Um, so he's kind of considered, you know, he's he's um, the the growth of the city and the community there is really attributed to him. Um, oh, here's a here I'm reading something. It says drew wealthy tourists to Sicily, particularly gay men, uncomfortable in Northern Europe. Um, so the question of the um, nature of those nudes, um, I think, can be raised. Um, and I kind of was quite uh, definitive. Obviously, he was not a pedophile. He was not having sexual relations with, um, with his models. In fact, it's on record that he, you know, was really, really keen to give them most of the earnings from the photographs. Um, he did sell them. There was a, um, you know, quite a, uh, uh, um, a good market for them. Um, they, a lot of them were sold under the counter um, because they were considered uh, explicit. I don't know if you would say, if we could say illegal. Um, but, you know, they were, they were erotic um homoerotic i guess um and during the kind of interesting to read that during the um second world war uh mussolini took an in i don't know if you know who mussolini is he's kind of like the uh italian fascist dictator when hitler was in power in germany and uh, Mussolini, in particular, took an interest in von, von Gluden's archive. Uh, von Gluden had died at that point. He died in 1931, but his photographs still, uh, or the plates, to, like the negatives to his, um, to the works, still existed. And Mussolini is credited with um, destroying, censoring about 2,000 out of those 3,000. Um, photographs, so that's really unfortunate. He, uh, so Mussolini considered them pornographic, um, but they are, they're, they're really just homoerotic. They're not pornographic. Um, there's no sexual activity um, in them. Anyways, um, so that kind of... Uh, gives us an overview about um, three different artists who are in search of Arcadia, who are trying to reconstruct it, who are traveling to various parts of Europe, North Africa, uh, the Pacific Islands, to, um, to find this Arcadian I idyll or ideal. Um, you know, it's. I think it's uh, worth thinking about. Um, well, I think first of all, the question of the nude and whether and what what the real purpose of various nudes are. There are, you know, they're certainly prevalent in two out of the three um, artists that we look at, and you know, there's a um, especially in this time of uh, cancel culture. I think it's really important to try to understand that nudes play a lot of different roles in specifically in art um, and you know sometimes they're uh, um, sometimes they are like I said just a, a symbol of um, innocence uh, sometimes they are indeed homoerotic or uh, heteroerotic um, sometimes they are exploitative, and, and there are scholars who have uh, considered whether the nudes of, of, of Paul Gauguin are um, exploiting the, his models. I don't think they were paid. I don't think, um, you know, and I don't think they had to take their shirts off for him. They were just naturally um, walking around without shirts or frequently, you know, unclothed. That's just how they lived, and but uh, whether they had any idea that um, his paintings would be, you know, distributed around the um, around the world is another question. Whether he got consent, 
um, which was really a concept that didn't um, exist in the 1900s. Um, so it's quite a complicated question. Um, yeah, so whether the, whether the nudes are exploitative or whether they simply are a vehicle for uh, depicting Arcadia, which again is a trope that dates back hundreds of years in European um, poetry, literature, painting, and so on. Um, we will continue. I think on Friday we have, uh, we, where are we? Um, we're looking at a, um, I don't know if I would call it an Arcadia, but it's a um, artist's colony in Germany called Vorpsvede. Um, and one of its uh, main proponents is a woman painter called Paula Moderson Becker, um, who was really a kind of um, an influential, uh, I want to call her a feminist. I don't know if she would, she wouldn't use that word, but she was um, a very uh, um, skilled, educated uh, woman um, who made some just fabulous paintings. Um, through, um, and we'll continue to look at other uh, groupings of artists kind of under, you know, like kind of Arcadian um, or Utopian. So there's Forbes Veda, there's um, Van Gogh going to Provence in south southern France, and then Kandinsky and Munter in um, Bavaria in a town called Murnau. So that's um, so that'll kind of trickle over into the following week. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up. Somebody here wants their dinner. I'm just waiting very patiently. Hope you have a great night, and I'll see you on see some of you on Friday. Okay, bye.